Hi guys and welcome back to my channel. My name is Aymara and in today's video I'll be telling you exactly how to get an A star in biology A level. Just a little bit of a background, I did do biology A level, AQA to be precise, and I did get an A star. I've tutored kids all the way from 11 to 18 years old and I'm a medical student, I'm in my second year at the moment so I've learned a lot from that. So in today's video I'll be drawing from experiences both as a student, as a teacher and as a medical student which involves a lot of biology as well. Um, so I hope you find this video helpful. Comment down below if you did find it helpful or any other tips you may have. And yeah, let's get on with the video. So this video is going to be split up into three sections. The first section is going to be how to learn and revise. The second section is going to be how to answer questions, i.e. exam technique. And the third section is going to be how to revise for the practical component slash essay if you have one like we did at AQA. So my first tip when it comes to learning and revising the content for biology A level is to use your specification to revise. What I mean by this is check your specification and only learn what's on your specification. So for example, when you're writing your notes, always write your notes from the specification. Have the specification out in front of you and make sure that each of the notes you write answers and fulfills each of the specification points. This means that not only are you not learning loads more information that you don't need, but also that you're learning everything that you need to. So for example, your teacher may by mistake miss out a specification point and thus when it comes to the exam, you may get a question that you're not familiar with how to answer. So by using the specification, you're, you know that absolutely all the bases have been covered and that you won't be caught out by any surprises. Also make sure that your notes are concise, don't write really long paragraphs or everything, make sure they are short and you're getting straight to the point so you're not having to learn loads of excess information or loads of waffle. Now that we've covered writing notes, we're going to cover how to actually learn your notes. So I've collated a few tips that I've learned or heard of throughout my time as I said as a student, as a tutor and as a medical student. The first way to learn your notes, which is something that I did, was to read my notes and then talk it through out loud, either to someone else, um, to myself, to a family member. And by talking it through, you're able to see if you have in fact memorised the information. Another tip which I use even now is to read your notes and then write it out somewhere, perhaps on a whiteboard, not word for word, but kind of summarising it because that way you're having to digest what you've just memorised and relay the information. The third tip which I use a lot on my students is to, once I've explained the information to them, get them to watch a video. So um, I'll link down below some really useful biology A-level revision um, YouTube channels and by watching a video after you've just read the information it kind of consolidates with what you've just learned it makes it easier to visualize and my fourth and final tip is something that I'm starting to do now at medical school and something that I really recommend also for practicing for the essay component if you do AQA um, this is making mind maps and I know to some of you that may seem silly it may seem like a waste of time but what is really good about making mind maps is that it conceptualizes what you've just learned. The reason why this is helpful is, for example, if you read an article with a start, middle and end, it can be really easy to, once after you've read it, to tell what you've just read to someone else. If you had to read um, a dictionary, for example, the same amount of words in a dictionary, it would be really hard to tell someone word for word what you just read. And the reason for this is that there's no storyline that would ordinarily make it easier for you to memorize. So by making a mind map, you're almost creating the storyline so you know how all the different key processes you've learned fits in together, which makes it so much more easier to memorize. My third tip for learning and revising um, the content at biology A level is to do past papers. This is the most important element of your revision and the reason for this is you can think you've learned everything. You can think right I've read all my notes, I've written all my notes, I'm good and what this does is gives you a false sense of reassurance. However, recall is only a tiny proportion of the total exam. Essentially, most of the questions you'll get at Biology A level, and this is what makes it so difficult, won't be recall, won't just be, okay, tell me the steps to photosynthesis. It will be application. So you might think you know the content, but you won't know how to apply it to completely different scenarios. It is very important that you mark 
the questions you do and two that you learn from your corrections learn from the corrections uh, of questions that you get wrong in your homework of questions that you get wrong in your tests the questions that you get wrong in your own practice questions that you're doing at home because that way you are learning from each mistake that you make and there are only so many questions the examiners can ask you so it means that when you get to your exam you've basically memorized as much of the marks as many of the mark schemes as you can so there's very little that they can throw at you that will completely blindside you um a really important website that i used was physics and maths tutor you can um access what the subject that you want the board that you do and the questions are separated by topic which is really good because when it comes to revision you can be like i'm revising homeostasis today and you can do questions related to homeostasis my fourth tip on learning and revising is to do with your revision timetable so i'll talk through that so i'm just going to talk through this revision timeline this is kind of what i did but also what i wish i would have done if i had time managed a little better so this is not taking into account if exams are cancelled because of covid19 so bear that in mind but on a normal year this is definitely what i'd suggest so that you get the most amount of time to learn the content and practice questions so usually your mocks will be finished by late february um between the completion of your mocks and the start of the Easter holidays, I would suggest that you finish all remaining revision notes for the whole of the specification. Now, you should have already finished most of them because, as I said earlier, you should be writing your notes as you go along because with A-level, the content is far too much to be able to write it all at the end. So here, what happened in my case is that some teachers still hadn't finished the A-level content and they were going to do it when we came back from Easter. You don't want to go along with that timeline because that's going to put too much pressure on you. They're only going to give you like a month to learn some topics um, until you sit your exam. So you want to, even if you haven't learned the subject, you want to finish all your revision notes um, between your mocks and the start of the Easter holidays using your textbook, mark schemes um, um, and some other revision sites which I'll link in the description. And then from the start of the Easter holiday to the end of the Easter holidays, so by the start of the summer term, you want to be learning the content. So using the tips that I spoke about earlier, doing the mind map, speaking through the content out loud, writing summaries, etc. Then once the summer term has begun, so you have from late April to around the start of exams, which is approximately late May, you want to be doing space repetition using past paper questions for each topic. Then as you approach your exams, and I'm talking about literally the week approaching, um, the week leading up to your exam, you want to do full timed past papers um, mark it strictly and learn from the corrections at this point you should have done practice questions on each topic several times don't do your past papers months in advance because you won't be able to do them again once it become once you get to those critical days before your exam and my last tip is to definitely practice data handling um, calculation and practical questions these are um, quite tricky take the time to know how to use the equations for example the chi-square um, equation make sure you understand it take time to read up on a bit of statistics so mean median mode correlations what independent and dependent variable mean because they will come up and you don't want it to be something that you just avoid learning it's really good because once you have them in the bank you know you'll be able to handle those questions now we're on to the second section which is how to answer questions um, at biology a level my first tip is to read the first word of every single question because that tells you how the exam board wants you to answer for example in an explain or describe question you need to be able to show how a process works connect each step along the way and you know you're not doing much interpreting it's usually a recall question if you have been told to state it is usually a simple one sentence answer will be usually worth one mark and if it's analyze you know you need to look at the data and be able to come to some sort of conclusion same with evaluate in fact with evaluate questions it's very important unless told otherwise that you examine the pros and cons or both sides of the argument. You, will, you won't get enough marks if you only look at one side of that argument. And I'll show you an example. So I got my exam remarked, hence I have my exam scripts. I don't think I'm allowed to show the question simply because I can't actually find it on the website, but I'll show you this much. 
So it says use figure three to evaluate this conclusion. So this may throw you in the deep end because you might think, ah, what does evaluate mean? So let's have a read of what I said. For temperatures below 26.5 degrees in rabbits and below 29 degrees in mice, a decrease in pH causes a decrease in the force of muscle contraction. So I've clearly stated a correlation. However, above these temperatures, muscle fibers at a lower pH than the control have a greater force of muscle contraction. Then I said, additionally, the results obtained may not be reliable as different pHs were not investigated and thus the force of muscle contraction at higher or other lower pHs is unknown and may not follow the same relationship. The question doesn't say explain why this is a, a right the right conclusion, it simply says to evaluate it. Then I said no statistical test was carried out to find out how statistically significant the differences in force and muscle contraction are. So in this question I got a four out of four because I was able to critically analyze um, the reliability of this conclusion and also the relationship of the different variables in the question. <laughs> The third and final section is on tackling questions surrounding required practicals in AQA. This was usually in your paper three and tackling the essay. So when it comes to required practicals, learn the method, learn the control variables, learn what the dependent, independent variables are. Do plenty of practical um, practice questions, which you can find on Physics and Maths Tutor, like I said. And if possible, get the practical guide. They have some practice questions in there and they set out each required practical really easily. All there is to practicing for required practical questions is to learn the practical and get better at data handling. And you'll be doing this if you're doing plenty of practice questions. And obviously make sure to read up on anything if you don't understand it. When it comes to essays, um, it is usually um, about testing you conceptually. So yes, you may know about proteins, carbohydrates, you may know about glycogen, but you'll get a question which is like, what is the importance of polymers um, to life? That's when mind maps come in real handy. Use previous essay questions, create a mind map for that essay question. So put polymers in the middle. DNA is a polymer of nucleotides, glycogen, etc. And then you can just really simply write one sentence. Um, what they're a polymer of and why they're important because this will help you structure your essay. Really good essays have four to five examples that answer the question, they'll describe the biological process and then at the end of each paragraph they'll relate it back to the question. Um, do practice timed essays and hand them into your teacher who I'm sure would be more than happy to read them um, and learn from their feedback. But yeah that is all for today guys. I'm so sorry I couldn't go into more depth, I could be here for hours, but I hope you enjoyed this video, I hope it was helpful, please let me know in the comments or in my DMs if you did find it helpful, and make sure to subscribe to my channel if you enjoyed it, remember to switch the post notifications on so you know when I post other helpful videos etc, and thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you in the next one.